By the end of today's video, you're going to be able to make your very own box switching device with everything you already have at home in just a few minutes. Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. video of the week. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Hello to all the new subscribers and welcome back to the family. So real quick, you may remember just a couple of weeks ago, I posted this tutorial of another box switching device. Now, as you guys know, I always do my credit in the research and we don't teach other people's material on this channel. That being said, you can never be 100% certain that something hasn't been created before. And in that circumstance, the method was similar, although different, to something somebody else had released using different materials and different objects, but the core method was kind of an overlap. So as the right thing to do, I took the video down. Now, I said after I did that, that that was a positive experience. And I love it when I find out what I think is original has been done before because it pushes me to strive to do better, to come up with new material, to work on something which maybe hasn't been done before, hopefully hasn't been done before, that gives you new, greener areas of creativity. And I told you I'd be back with a new box switching device which would conquer some of the flaws that I had with that original concept. And today, this is that video. This is the video that I promised you for the new box switching device. The reason I think this is better is because you can show the box 360 degrees before the switch. And after the switch has happened, you can leave that box face up on the table or in the palm of your hand, and they can burn the box because there is nothing to see. I also think it's slightly easier to do and slightly easier to perform. Now, as always, if you want to win my very own box switching device that we actually make in today's video, then all you need to do is subscribe to the channel and comment anything down below. Let's learn how to make the gimmick and how to perform it. This is what I use to make this gimmick, but you don't actually need all of this and you'll understand why as we go along. But really quickly, I've got some magic tape, double stick tape, two small magnets, a blade, a clear plastic card, double backer, a deck of blue cards or any card you like, and a scissors, you don't need all of this and you'll understand why. This is a phantom card from Joshua J's phantom deck, but you can use any piece of clear plastic or a piece of cardboard, it really doesn't matter, but you'll understand why. First thing I'm gonna do is cut this up. So you can see, if I get the light, this is just about this big on my finger at the moment. And what we're gonna do is using the edge of the deck, the plastic. All right, so this is gonna allow us to make it flexible. So just mark it with this. So now I have this hinged piece of plastic. I'm gonna cut it down in a moment, but you can see that I'm gonna place it at the bottom of the card box and it's gonna flip over like this. But we need to do two things. We need to add a magnet to it. First thing I'm gonna do is open up the card box at the back and using some double stick tape. So double stick tape goes in here. I'm gonna place one of these small magnets on the double stick tape in the center like that and then stick the card box shut just like this. Now I'm gonna take the piece of plastic I'm going to align it on the box and stick a magnet here. So if I get that lined up correctly, you can see the magnet on the plastic using some magic tape. Just 
just like that, okay? So now this magnet is stuck to this piece of plastic. Now the next thing we need to do is create a hinge on this piece of plastic. And I can apply the magic tape over the card box and on to the plastic, like so. And now we have a hinge. I'm just going to trim off this excess piece here. So now we have this little flap, like so, that will flip around. The very last thing we need to do is add the card gimmick to it. Just like that. I'm going to fold this up, like so. A couple of times, make sure it's nice and pliable. And now we just need to stick it onto the gimmick. Friendly neighborhood magic tape. Add it to the back here so you can see there's a sticky part right there. And now take the card. And I'm going to stick this edge here, place it like that, stick it down. Like so, and here you have your gimmick. Now let's learn how to activate it and make it work. Now that you have your box switching device ready to go, let's learn how to execute and activate the switch. So first of all, I'm gonna use a red card just so you can get a good understanding of when I'm switching the card in and out. But in theory, this is essentially what's happening from an exposed point of view. You can see our hinge here. Essentially what's gonna happen is this card and gimmick is gonna swing all the way around to the bottom of the deck. Now, that obviously would look pretty obvious just doing this back and forth. What's important is the way you handle this. So a few simple touches can turn this from an obvious switch into a very realistic looking piece of magic. So the first thing is that if you were to hold the box flat on your hand, the gimmick would get caught, right? So you're gonna modify your grip. And the way to do that is to simply hold the box in this top corner, all right? Now, that will just flip out of the way, okay? Alternately, you can hold it at the edges with your thumb at the back corner, and this will still flip around due to the nature of the design, it'll flip past your thumb. Okay? Now the reason we have the magnet here, now you can see, is that if it didn't, sometimes it would just hang out here, which would be obvious. But because of the magnet, it now flips all the way around. So your angles are really, really good once it gets there. So that's how to hold the box. Now, one other thing, you can hold it in this dealer's grip, but what you need to do is, is to move the box up high. So as the, as the switch would happen, you'd have to move the box up high to allow that card to move around. I find it's just a whole lot easier to just hold it like this. Now, you're going to need to switch that card in, of course. So the way to do that is when you have your card Mercury folded, you're going to hold it in like a finger palm. Now remember, you can see the, the border, the white border pointing like an arrow down. You need to have the card in your hand mirror that image. So from my point of view, I can see it pointing in the same direction. Okay, so from exposed view, it's like this. And you'll notice that I have it so my fingers are above it. Almost like pretty much that I'm going to come over the top of it. You could also come from the side and rearrange the grip, but I like to have it in this orientation. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to hold the box like this, come over with my hand, and as I do that, I'm going to drag backwards. And as I drag my fingers back, it'll automatically move the gimmick out of the way. Alright, so let me show you that from the other side. So as I bring my fingers back, the gimmick is going to automatically spring out of the way. At the same time, you can see I'm holding this with my thumb, I'm going to move my fingers up and out of the way. Okay, so as I come back, I'm just gonna expose that card. So from the front, it looks like that. From the side, 
it looks like this. And it creates this beautiful retention of vision that seemingly nothing happens other than you are just picking up the card. It should look like that you just, if this was really there, it looks like you're just coming back with a little swoop, you're picking the card up, right? So just like that. And you kind of want to practice the actual motion without doing the switch. You want to practice that motion. So when you do actually do the switch, you look like you're doing the same thing. Now, the reason we come over with our hand is to shield this. As this comes up and around, you'll see the height of it is about this high off the deck. So if we were to come sideways, which can, which can work, you can block it with your hand, but it might, might peak up. If you'd come sideways, it might stick up above your hand, which isn't a big deal because they see that card sort of pop out of view. And if it's a blue card, obviously, it looks like nothing happens. But just to be safe, I come over and now look how good that cover is. You, it's literally completely blocked. So again, boom here. Now you're in this position, right? The cards swung all the way around to the underneath. You just need to make sure you don't flash this. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, I leave this sit out in the open. I display this because nobody cares about the box. Remember that, nobody cares about this. So once I've switched the card, I wanna hand this out. Remember, no one cares here. So I can hand this out to be examined. Don't run when you're not being chased. And whilst that happens, I just do this. Ready? I just let the box go flat on my hand. Now this does one of two things. This flattens the gimmick at the back. And it now means you can show the box all over like this. You can just place it in your pocket or do anything you want. But that whole sequence put together is this is here, I come over, I switch the card. I'm gonna hand that card out as I just reposition my hands to grip. If I want to then I can just casually talk with the box, but all the heat is on the switched card. Everything's about the switch card. What's nice is that if you keep a deck inside here like this, you can place this on the table and the weight will just cover that card. Again, nobody cares about this. You can also position this box on the edge of a table like this, right? So if this is the edge of the table with the gimmick uh, activated up here, you can actually do this, come and switch the card and it'll swing and hang off the edge of the table. And whenever you want to, you can just pick the box up and lay it back down flat. Right, so that's why you're doing it with no hands on the box. And this is just, this is just on a table. You come over, pick it up, and switch it, and it's basically a one-handed switch. So that's how you activate it. You can play around with a bunch of different handlings. You can try things like as if you're going to tip the card into this hand. So I have a card finger palm. You can do that and make it look like you're switching into finger palm. You can come up with a bunch of different handlings, but ideally, you just want to hold it like so, and just come over switch and hand it out. As soon as you've got that card into view, give it to them. In terms of a quick routine, this is one example. I would place the gimmick off to the side and have a card selected and signed. So to save time, I've pre-signed pre cards and I'd get a double ready, okay? So in this case, this is a double with a signed card. They'd sign it, I'd have them hold on to their cards. So they would hold on to their card, I'll just place it to the side for now so you can see it. So that card will be in their hand. As all the focus is in their hand, I'm gonna mercury fold the bottom card of the deck. So I would take my break very quickly. I'll show you the mercury fold. I have my thumb like this. I have a break under the card. I'm gonna drag back, and fold a card around my thumb and squeeze it onto the deck. Now, when you do that and you steal it into finger palm like this, you'll notice the cards in the correct orientation to do the switch. So this happens, but boom, as the card is in their hand, I say, watch, on one, two, three, that card's gonna vanish. They turn over the card that they think is their card and it's changed into a random card. Now you can spread through the deck if you want to, whatever, but what you're gonna do is just secretly steal this card away in finger palm, and you'll notice it becomes in the same perfect orientation. The deck goes down as your hand comes to your side, you pick up the gimmick, you can hold it in any position you want, and you're simply gonna switch that gimmick in and show that it's their signed card. That's a very simple, quick routine you can do with this. I hope you all enjoyed that. Take the gimmick, 
go crazy with it, get creative, do a million different things, come up with a million different handlings, a thousand different routines. The world is your oyster with this box switching device because it's so easy to use, so easy to make, and so fun to perform. That being said, I think the bigger lesson here is to find the positives where people would find the negatives. So when they find out a method that has been done or explored before, they tend to throw their toys at the pram and not want to continue creating anymore. I think the positive comes from thinking, you know what, this is going to inspire me to find something new and hopefully improve. And that's why I thought it was so important to show you today's video, because I took the idea, which was to have a, a folded card switched on top of a playing card box. The old method had been sort of done before in a different way. And to do the respectful thing, I took that tutorial down, but it didn't stop me. I went off and I created this, which ultimately led me to have a better creation for me. For me personally, I prefer this method now, and I wouldn't have had it if I hadn't have been stopped in my tracks on the original one. So remember, if you want to win this exact gimmick sent to you for free anywhere in the world, then hit that subscribe button and comment down below. Even if you don't want to win the gimmick, please hit that subscribe button. It's a tiny gesture that goes a really long way for me. And as always, I'll be back on Thursdays, live on Sundays, and back here in a week for Tutorial Tuesdays. See you very, very soon in the next video. Peace.